Hey everyone, this is lecture number four uh, for the week of June uh, 9th. And this week uh, our text is going to be Braid. Uh, I'm going to give a uh, lecture about how to write a comparison paper. Uh, this week's task, uh, you just have your post uh, due by Friday at 10 p.m. Uh, it's a free topic this week on Braid, so basically anything you want to write uh, about Braid. Uh, also, uh, want to remind you to contribute your 500 words or more to discussion uh, by Sunday at 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Uh, we have not really been hitting this goal of 500 words uh, per week. Uh, I want to remind you that uh, this is a composition course, and uh, everyone needs to get to uh, 7,000 words of new prose by the end of the course. Uh, that's one of the only requirements of the course. Uh, and so uh, that's why it's so much discussion each week. Uh, and we've been able to get through some of that with the activities, uh, working on the poems. Uh, you all did a great job putting up content uh, in the annotations. Uh, the uh, mind maps we made worked pretty well. I gave people some credit for that. But the actual discussion of the uh, readings, uh, especially last week, it, it's been, uh, was you know, pretty lacking. Uh, so I'm hoping we pick it up this week. Uh, I know there was some confusion about uh, the activity last week. That's that's why I've kind of eliminated the activity for this week. And so uh, I really want to encourage you to uh, use Google Plus as a place to uh, think through the readings and think through the assignments uh, together. So while you're playing Braid, playing Braid this week, keep in mind that you that you have. Uh, all of this uh, discussion <laughs> to be doing on the on the blog each week and so while you're playing Braid, if, if you think of a question maybe put a discussion question up if you see that I put up a question you know, write a response maybe I, I'd really like to uh, get some conversation going I know it's just the three of us but but hopefully we can have uh, more of a conversation uh, on the Google Plus space uh, than we've had so far uh, finally uh, this week uh, your comparison paper is due. This is your first major paper. Uh, just the first draft this week is going to be due on... Oh, I got the date wrong on here. I'm realizing and now correcting that the... Uh, I had the dates wrong. I, I uh, forgot to change the dates on the website. I, I repeated a week of dates, so hopefully you all didn't get confused, but uh, I want to confirm that the first draft of the paper is going to be due this coming Sunday, the 15th. Uh, and that's going to be the first draft of your comparison paper. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, the uh, draft is going to be due uploaded uh, to Google Drive so that we can uh, do uh, peer review uh, all during next week. So next week you don't have any uh, text to read. Uh, your only task is uh, to participate in peer review. So the only text this week is Braid. Uh, it's a game from 2008. Uh, it was released on uh, Xbox Live and then ported to a bunch of other places. Uh, it was primarily made by a or designed by a single author, Jonathan Blow. He put up uh, an obnoxious amount of money <laughs> to be able of his own money to be able to pull it off, something uh, like thirty thousand dollars or something to that effect. Uh, the watercolor art design was finally done by uh, David Hellman. Uh, there had been uh, another. Uh, artists before that, but they, it helmeted did the final work. Uh, it deals with themes of loss and regret. You get a fragmented narrative uh, that's earned by solving uh, puzzles. Uh, each of the puzzles revolves around uh, some uh, manipulation of time, some time mechanic. The levels are expertly designed. Uh, you'll figure this out right away that uh, he's anticipated how, or Blow's anticipated how you'll get into different situations and set it up so uh, though the puzzles and though the game world is going to seem really open and there are lots of ways to get through it, they're very clearly prescribed ways to employ the mechanics to get through it. This is going to result in uh, gameplay that's going to feel like, um, it's going to at times feel like trial and error, uh, where you'll test something out and see if it works and then it won't and you back up and try it again. Uh, but once you get it, it'll click, and then everything will work in the level. So it has this, um, uh, it, it has a delineated path for each of the levels, and so it'll feel like it's impossible, and then you'll get it, and then everything will be 
uh, golden after that. Uh, even as the narrative is revealed, it's going to still remain abstract and kind of elusive. It's going to uh, be gappy. Uh, but I encourage you, uh, once you get it all, to read it and pay attention to it as you read, but also as you play through, but also come back and, and look at all of it uh, in as large of a chunk as you can <laughs> uh, before you move on to the final level. You're really going to want to see it in all of its entirety to try and think through what's going on. Uh, it has a relationship to history and tradition of video games. It's in conversation with uh, a lot of games. Uh, some of them are going to be very recognizable. Obviously, the uh, Princess in Another Castle is a reference to Super, to Super Mario Brothers. Uh, and then all the mechanics of platforming also. Uh, borrowing a lot from Super Mario Brothers, but a lot of other traditions and games as well. So you might play some of the Spot the Theme or Spot the Connection as you go through. And one thing you're also going to want to be on the lookout is for a correlation between gameplay and the story or themes uh, that are going on in the narrative. This is always going to be a tension in video games. We've talked about this before, I think. Uh, the uh, Throughout the history of games, there's always been this uh, difficult relationship between the cutscene where the narrative happens and the part where it lets the player do what they're going to do. Uh, Half-Life was a really important uh, video game. Uh, because it was one of the first to allow you to continue to move your character while the narrative was happening, uh, so you'd like walk up to the scientist and they would talk, and the scientist would talk to you, and you could walk around and you know jump on them or whatever they're talking. Uh, Braid uh, is going to be in this conversation as well uh, because the narrative exposition happens completely separate from the puzzles. So you have the puzzles, and you're going to wonder what what does the specifics of having to get through this gate by throwing a ring in front of me that slows time down, what does that have to do with anything that's happening in the story? Uh, so be thinking about that as you go as you go along. What is the relationship between the puzzles and the gameplay and what's happening in the game, uh, the part that you actually control and interact with? Uh, what does that have to do with the part that's written, the text part, the part that's in words? Uh, also, um, I envy you that you get to play the final level for the first time. It's uh, one of the most brilliant levels I think I've ever played. It's once you get through the whole game and you've, if you've been thinking about all these themes uh, and all of the concepts that have been uh, evoked by the uh, narrative as you go along, the final level is uh, it, it's really smart. So I look forward to uh, reading what you all think about the final level. In fact, it would be awesome if you posted your impression to what happened in the final level. Your, your, your initial thoughts uh, when seeing it for playing through it for the first time. Uh, that would be pretty great. But uh, take it from me, if you're having trouble getting through it, the final, the final level is really, <laughs> is really where the payoff hits home. So enjoy it. Enjoy Braid. If you have any questions about uh, playing it or uh, how to get access to it or where to find it, please let me know. Send me an email or, or post something on Google+. Plus. Send me a Hangout, whatever uh, works. But you, you, I don't think you'll have any trouble uh, getting it. So the comparison paper uh, this week First thing you want to do is select one of the video games we played so far. You can pick a slow year or braid, it's up to you, either one. Uh, and you're going to write a 750 word essay that answers the following question. How does the game that you selected, either a slow year or braid, compare to the work to a work or works of literature we've studied so far? Uh, so this is going to be 350 words, is, or 750 words is, is just about three pages, so you don't have a whole lot of space to work with. Uh, so you want to be thinking small scale. Uh, your first draft is going to be due this Sunday, the 15th, by 10 p.m. Uh, and I'd like you to upload that to the Week 5 folder on Google Drive. Uh, if you haven't played around with Google Drive yet, please test that you have the ability to upload uh, before uh, the 9.59 on Sunday. Uh, I believe that I've added everybody, but I'm not positive. Sometimes and they get added, people get added and don't have the right kind of permissions or whatever. Uh, so please test that you can upload something before the, the zero hour. Again, next week is going to be revisions week, and the week after that, uh, and at the end of that week, you're going to have your second draft too. Uh, so I want you to think of this comparison paper as a kind of experiment that you're conducting, uh, and it kind of write it that way. Uh, you may have done comparison and contrast work uh, through grade school and perhaps high school, uh, where your assignment was compare. Uh, it, you may even have had a little 
a block form to fill out where you write down all the things that are the same about two things and then all the things that are different about them. Uh, and that's the basic premise behind this kind of work too. And so as we've been doing throughout the semester, uh, you want to start with a free write, uh, take a five, uh, maybe 10 minutes uh, and write or type everything that comes to mind without keep taking your hands off the keyboard or your pen off the paper uh, until your uh, buzzer sounds just to get all the ideas out of your head. And you want to go back and reread those ideas and mind map them, come up with main areas, things that were concerning you, places that uh, were significant or interesting to you, uh, themes that are arising out of your out of your writing. And then you want to start getting some structure in there. You want to start categorizing. What are the things that came up that are kind of the same? What are the points of similarity, the points of uh, comparison between uh, the game you selected and the works of literature that we've done so far? Uh, where are the places where they're different, where they're diverging, where there uh, seem to be something completely different going on? You want to look for, uh, in the, within those categories, you want to look for overlapping themes. You basically try and take a step up, try to organize uh, within the detailed comparisons that you've come up with, uh, main basically main topics of comparison and contrast. Uh, I'm going to encourage you to write your support paragraphs first. So once you identify what's the same and what's different, and maybe look for sub, think about subsections that are going within that. Uh, write those paragraphs first, right? So the topic sentence, which is basically the topic sentence for the paragraph, is basically going to state uh, one of the points of comparison or one of the points of contrast between the two, and then fill in your details. And you remember, you want to work with close observation, detailed close reading, uh, as your support for the points that you're making. So once you've got your support paragraphs in place. And maybe you end up filling more than three pages, that's all right. But once you get your support paragraphs in place and you kind of understand how you're thinking about the relationship between these two. Oh, and one other thing I want to mention, uh, I think that's probably going to work the best if you have two sections where you have things that are the same about them and things that are different. Uh, one, an alternate structure would be to, to ping pong back and forth on this topic. One is like this, and the other one is like this. Or on this topic, they are the same. It, it usually makes more sense to say, here are points of similarity, and then move to a new section, and here are points of difference. Uh, the ping-ponging uh, can often lose your reader as if they're trying to move back and forth and, and try and keep in mind which one you're talking about at what time. Uh, so uh, if you think about that way, you want to keep them more topically contained. So, uh, <clears throat> once you kind of have these, you know, main supports or main areas of close reading sort of mapped out, then you want to review over them, see what you came up, see uh, what you came across, and then write your conclusion. And if you're thinking about this as an experiment, uh, the mind mapping, the categorizing. Uh, the looking for themes, the setting up into same and different paragraphs, that's the experiment part. That's the part where you're doing your investigation. And so you can't know how things turned out until you've actually conducted the comparison. So that's why it, this would be the ideal time to write the conclusion. Now, uh, a lot of times people think that when they write a paper, they have to know the answer to the question that, they're at, that they've been asked before they start. You don't necessarily have to do that. Uh, oftentimes that will lead you into uh, difficult situations where you're trying to write or talk your way out of a corner that you've built up out of preconceived notions. Uh, let the comparison happen first and then come back and try and figure out what's significant about it. So that's what the conclusions should do when you get to the conclusion. Basically say, now that we've looked at this comparison, here's what I think the relationship is between this game and uh, literature or the literatures we've looked at. Uh, and then you go back and write your introduction and your thesis uh, now that you kind of know where it's going to go and you can go and build in uh, transitions and structures uh, basically the, so it seems like it's cohesive and, and we can definitely help you do that part in the uh, the, the peer review section uh, but I really want to emphasize that the goal of this is to get really strong support paragraphs that allow you to 
justifying a conclusion or some kind of a claim that you're going to make at the end. And I'm imagining that most of the claims will be something to do with uh, what, to what degree does the game that you've selected qualify as a kind of literature? To what degree does it does it answer to a kind of literature? But there are lots of other things that you could you could end up saying. So again, free write, mind map, begin to organize put things into categories, write your support paragraphs first, then come back to figure out what it is you were trying to say or what it is that you've concluded from doing that kind of uh, experimental study, uh, of experimental uh, comparison, <laughs> experiment as uh, comparison, uh, then go back and write your introduction and thesis and, and build in the rest. So again, your task for this week, uh, you have a post that's due on Friday by 10 p.m. That's an open topic on Brave. Uh, I'm encouraging you to contribute 500 words or more to discussion throughout the week. Uh, hopefully you have some discussions about Braid, maybe some first impressions when you first start playing. Uh, maybe there's a puzzle you're having trouble with, whatever it happens to be. Uh, remember to be contributing your 500 words throughout the week here. And then finally, you have your first draft of your comparison paper, which is due, uploaded to Google Drive on Sunday by 10 p.m. And again, please test to make sure that the Google Drive works before you get to 9.59 on Sunday. If you have any questions, again, email or post under support on Google+. I suppose you can also uh, send me a hangout, uh, whatever works for you. Uh, but that's it for this week, and I look forward to seeing you uh, on the internets.